Hello everyone, in this tutorial we are going to work through all the possible tests that can be used to analyze Likert scale survey using SPSS. So stay tuned till the end. Here in the variable view, we have the Likert scale questions and demographic questions at the end. So the Likert scale questions, all of them are coded from one strongly disagree to five strongly agree. If you have this coding that is reversed, you need to make it this way. So you need to reverse code them because the lower values should be assigned to the lower labels to make sense. The next step after checking the coding and the variables, we need to know that those items here or those variables here in the variable view correspond to your questionnaire or your survey items. And these are the uh, independent uh, and dependent variables in your uh, research. So you need to know that you, we have the different types of variables that are called dependent and independent variables. So the relationship among those dependent and independent variables is tested through what we call hypotheses. And the procedure is called hypothesis testing. So we have, for example, uh, the hypothesis that assumes that there is a relationship between motivation, let's say this one, and uh, hard work. So these are two independent variables or two dependent variables because for correlation we don't specify whether one is the dependent or the other is the independent. And the second test is regression, uh, which tests the impact or the effect of one variable or of many variables on uh, an outcome variable. Let's say the impact or the effect of motivation and dedication on, let's say, a higher uh, score achievement. So the more motivated you are, the better grades you get at school. So this is another test, another hypothesis. Then we have uh, hypotheses that test differences like well, whether or not there is any statistically significant difference between males and females in terms of its same motivation. Uh, there is another test that we call one-way ANOVA that tests the relationship or not the relationship, it tests the differences among uh, different categorical variables in terms of one dependent variable, like whether or not there is any statistically significant difference in terms of education level on the one hand and motivation on the other hand. So these are the major tests that we have, but we have some other tests like uh, Cronbach Alpha Reliability, Exploratory Factor Analysis and Confirmatory Factor Analysis that can be used for reliability and validity of the research instruments and we usually conduct a pilot study first on a small scale sample usually in the IRB uh, to just check the reliability before proceeding to the main study. So let's try to demonstrate these tests that I have just explained. So to do uh, first reliability and validity, we need to go to analyze and then we need to go to scale and then reliability analysis. So here I will just move all of those items that form a construct or a scale. Let's say that uh, IV1 to IV, uh, let's say 8, uh, all of these items form motivation. So I will just move them here and then just call them motivation. So the model is kept at alpha and I go to statistics and I just choose scale if item deleted in case uh, that the alpha level is low uh, or is below 0.7 so that I can see which items I can reverse code. So I click continue and then I click OK. So this is the output. Fortunately, all of the items are uh, good and they are reliable. So they demonstrate this uh, strong alpha uh, reliability or Cronbach Alpha reliability, uh, which is uh, more than 90% uh, as you can see here. So since it's uh, reliable, we need to uh, combine those items into one score. So I to, to do that, we need to go to transform and then uh, compute variable and let's call this motivation. And then I will come to the numeric expression, I would type mean, open the parenthesis, and I would just keep moving these items, putting comma uh, between each one separately till I finish. So after I finish uh, these, I will need to close the parenthesis and click OK. So once I click OK, what will happen is that a new variable will be created at the end, which is called, let's say, motivation. So I will just uh, copy the name and I put it here in, in, in the label. 
So here, this uh, variable, if you check it, it's an it's a scale uh, level in terms of measurement level, and you see the scores. So here, I just combined all of the it uh, like of the eight items into one score that we call the composite score or the overall mean score, or sometimes we call it the uh, latent construct, especially if you are doing uh, structural equation modeling or or other advanced uh, statistics. So once we have the main score, I, I can come here and I start running other tests. Like I want to compare, uh, let's say, uh, different genders in terms of motivation. So to do this, I need to go to, to analyze, then compare means, then independent samples t-test, uh, not proportions. So it's independent samples t-test. To do this, we go to analyze, then compare means, then independent samples t-test. So in this case, I will put gender uh, at birth in the grouping variable and I need just to specify one and two I don't want to count uh, prefer not to say because there are few respondents there so I will just take motivation and move it there and click uh, OK and this is the mean score of female in terms of motivation and the, males, the, the mean score of males so obviously the uh, females uh, have higher motivation than males is this statistically significant can we generalize this finding from this sample to the population we just move to this statistic uh, table or independent sample t-test table and see if the Cronbach are, or if the not the Cronbach alpha, it's the if the p-value is below 0 0.05 or equal 0 0.05 we can assume that there is a statistically significant difference if not we can uh, say that there is no statistically significant difference and hence we cannot generalize these findings from the sample to the population. This is the independent sample t-test. We can run uh, what we call one-way ANOVA in case we have more than two groups. Let's say for education we have more than two groups. I go to analyze then compare means and let's say one-way ANOVA and I put education in the uh, grouping variable and motivation in the dependent list, I can just choose post hoc tests in case I assume that there will be statistically significant difference, like less uh, significant difference for the equal variances assumed, and the other tests like games howl in case the equal uh, in case that equal variance is not assumed. I will click continue. For the options, I can just pick uh, descriptive statistics, the um, Levine's test of homogeneity of variance. I can just put a visualization or a chart that is called means plot. I can click continue. I can keep this if estimate effect size clicked and I click OK and let's wait for it. So here you see that the education level, we can just clearly uh, visualize it. Like the higher the education level, the more motivated the respondents are. Uh, so here this uh, just graph shows that uh, briefly and you see the asterisk here this means that the there is a statistically significant difference between education even this is uh, like attested by the ANOVA table here uh, so different educational levels statistically differ from each other or are different from each other in terms of motivation and this can be clearly seen in, on this table so this is the one-way ANOVA assume that I want to uh, run correlation I need to keep computing the overall mean score for all of these uh, let's say items or let's say I have motivation and uh, hard uh, work. Uh, so I just go again to analyze, then uh, scale, then reliability. Uh, suppose that uh, hard work is DV1. So I will just uh, look for it. So this DV, yeah, so DV1 to DV8. So I will just uh, put them here again and let's say hard work. And I do the same click ok because already we have the scale of item deleted click it so click continue click ok and the scale is reliable so ne the next step is that again i will go to transform so i can just go to it from here without going to the other window and then i will just uh, choose uh, these ones and uh, uh, replace them with dv so here i already have iv so i will just replace that with d d for all of these And then here we can say hard work and click OK. So what will happen? New variable will be created at the end. So this is like the variable. I can just copy this here, hard work. And I go to analyze and then I go to correlate, bivariate. And then I will put motivation on the one hand and hard work on the other hand. So here I will just pick person and spearman. 
if I assume that the, 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 the relationship here is, uh, let's say, directional, I will say that it's one-tailed. If it's not directional, I will just keep it two-tailed. I can just show only the lower triangle for EPA formatting. I can go to options and choose means and standard deviations. Click continue, click OK. And here is the mean and standard deviation along with the sample size. That is the end. So if you see that uh, here we have uh, a statistically significant strong positive correlation of 78.5% between motivation and hard work, meaning that the the, the, the highly uh, the more motivated respondents are, the more likely they will uh, work hard. So this is for the Pearson, which is the parametric statistics, and this is for the non-parametric uh, Spearman correlation test. The next step, we can do what we call a simple linear regression. So we can just go to analyze, and then we can go to regression, then linear, and I will just want to see the impact, let's say, of motivation on hard work. So I don't want to test the correlation, but the impact. So here to do that, or the effect. So here again, the model, the RA785, which is the same correlation that we got in the Pearson correlation, as you can see. And then we have the significance level of this model. This means that the model fits the data. Uh, and then the, the impact is 76.6% of, let's say, uh, uh, motivation on hard work. And this is statistically significant. So this is regression in brief. If we have um, multiple variables or multi multiple independent variables, we can call this, uh, let's say, multiple linear regression. So it's the same. We can just go here and check linear regression. And I can add another variable, let's say, perceptions and then click OK. Let's see what the perceptions. So perceptions have negative uh, impact of 75% uh, and this impact is not statistically significant. So this means that perceptions do not affect hard work more than motivation. So motivation affects hard work. Maybe perceptions can affect motivation, which in turn can affect hard work. In this case, we can have moderator mediation relationship. But in this case, uh, this is beyond our scope for now. Uh, so the, the other tests uh, that we can run is the chi-square test. Uh, so here we can go to analyze, then we can go to descriptive stats, and then we have uh, cross tabs. So here I can just uh, cross tab two, let's say, uh, variables. So here we put gender, and let's just put the first variable, which is IV. So I'm just focusing on one item, not a composite score can go here and check the uh, cut square and I can just cl uh, click display uh, cluster bar charts and click OK. So this is the chi-square and this one is statistically significant, meaning that there is statistically significant association between gender on the one hand and the first item of, let's say, uh, motivation on the other hand, in the sense that males seem to be uh, agreeing and so like uh, this one, strongly disagreeing. I can just modify the color so that I can make them more, let's say, clear or clearer. Or, and here we can just see the, the numbers in details in table rather than uh, in graph. So uh, the other last test that I want to show you is exploratory factor analysis. So we go to analyze, then we go to dimension reduction. Normally, this should have been done in the research methodology section or the uh, validity section of the instrument. So just click dimension reduction and factor. And here I will just move all the items of the Likert scale. And then I can go here and I choose uh, initial solution, chemo and Bartlett's test, determinant, significance level, etc. Then I go to extractions and I choose principal components, analysis, script plots, and keep it like that. For the rotation, I can just choose, uh, if I assume relationships, so since there is a relationship among the variables, I will choose pro max and then click continue. Uh, scores I will just save as uh, variables for regression and options I can just uh, replace with me in case there are uh, missing values. In this case, we don't have missing values. So in terms of the display format, I can sort by size and suppress more coefficients that are, let's say, uh, less than 30 so that they won't uh, show up on the survey. Click OK. And let's go to the these uh, outputs so the, the model is good based on those statistics, 97, and this one is statistically significant. And then uh, the items cannot be removed because all of the loadings are built above 0.5. Uh, and these are uh, four uh, or five uh, variables that explain uh, this variance. And this is the uh, component matrix. And this is the pattern matrix that is rotated. You can see how those IVs load perfectly into their corresponding categories. So this means that the uh, explorat uh, exploratory factor analysis shows this uh, dimensionality of the Likert scale, meaning that we have this discriminant uh, uh, 
uh, validity uh, and also convergent validity in terms of the Likert scale. So this is in brief and in details uh, how you can uh, analyze Likert scale uh, surveys using all possible tests that, that are most frequently used in uh, academic research. If you have questions uh, or remarks kindly uh, add them below or let me know. See you soon. Bye for now.